Well, our, our goal, my goal and Jim's goal is to demonstrate how to leverage the network flows with elk stick. What is Who are we? I'm a Francisco Badaro and we compete in telecommunication routing, network optimization, and cybersecurity are an important part of my life. Uh, for the last 20 years, I have been actively working in this area. Currently, I'm a telecommunication manager at ITS Brazil, a tier two ISP here in Salvador, Bahia, Brazil, where I'm responsible people for telecommunication, interconnection, and cybersecurity. We have a sister too, and also have a passion. I consider my spirit hole, the computer science and the research. And I'm also a professor in undergraduate and graduate course to network and cybersecurity subjects at the Unirui University Center, Centro Universitario Unirui, Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. Cybersecurity, network, routing, and optimization is my area of research. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing my friend, James Chen. Hi, thank you, Francisco. My name is James Shank, and I am the Chief Architect of Community Services for Team Cymru. As the Chief Architect, my role is to work with community members around the world to discover problems within the larger community that Team Cymru might be able to help to solve, and then to work with the community members to develop ways to solve those. And one of the, one of the premier solutions that we offer on the community services side is what the, the focus of this presentation is about. It's our team, the Team Cymru's Nimbus threat uh, monitor solution that uh, Francisco and I will be sharing with you today. And Francisco will show how he has benefited from it and how the community can benefit from it. Back to you, Francisco. Thank you, James. Let's go to our summer agenda. Has, has two talks. Uh, the first talk is an introduction where we will briefly present the theoretical reference. The second talk is our case study where we will describe the proposed solution and present the case study of a ESP in Brazil, the ITS telecommunication. Uh, the, the ITS used the, the open solution for fighting our enemy. And our conclusion with the future prospect, we intend, if our time is not long, to present the two in a live in a full production environment. But now, start with the introduction. Uh, you know yourself, if we consider that we are at war, uh, then we need to know ourselves to better know our enemy. We need to know our traffic and its nature in order to able to contextualize it only but knowing the profile of our traffic, can we understand the nature of our enemy? Like Shenzhou, uh, to know enemy and to know yourself. But our proposal here is the use of a powerful network management protocol for the mission of to know yourself. In this context, the flow protocols like NetFlow, SFlow, JFlow, IPFix, and other provide details on traffic, including allow you to analyze anomalies and better know your enemy. One good thing about IPFix is its extensive capability with templates make traffic analyzing even more powerful. But and for the success of our mission, we need to analyze our net of traffic and generate technology with the popular solution correlating your network flow with Team Cymru signal intelligence through flow analysis. We have effectiveness in identifying malware by analyzing and correlating with behaviors that define its profile. 
Our mission, our mission is to defy the enemy, to defy malicious activity in our internet backbone and correlating network traffic with this opposite solution. One example of our enemy is botnets. For this presentation, let's focus on a common enemy, botnets. A botnet is a set of compromised hosts that run malicious software remotely controlled. Our purpose must surpass the purpose of a botnet. Botnets have a purpose, support for cybercrime and scale attackers impact. And our focus is in the file host, correlation, malware, and network evidence, and fighting against cybercrime. In the command control infrastructure, one suggested action would be combat the command control activities. In your backbone, the cybercrime exercises remote control through the automated process in control of the hosts, the bots through the communication channels of the most diverse means and IRC, HTTP, the deep web, web Tor, and a lot of ways. Killing or minimizing the common control activity means missing the impact of botnet activity in your backbone. Okay, our enemy is identifying the botnet and our mission. Our mission is fighting botnets to mitigate malicious activities from cybercrime. How? Identify actors. The actors is our network hosts involved in these events. Correlation malware activity with network evidence and put off the command control activity. Mm. How to assist our in our mission? Now, in this time on answer finance, simple, provided the title information about our network traffic, contextualize it with cybersecurity, and fighting botnet, touch the command control activity, and identify the actor and the threat. How do this? Well, with strategy, intelligence, science, and aided by a tool. Now, is with you, my friend James. Thank you, Francisco. So, Francisco gave us a good picture of what the problem is, and now I will present the proposed solution. Team Cymru's Nimbus Threat Monitor. But first, what is it? In the, its most simplest form, it is a community service product, which means it's a free product available to network operators around the world that's built on a Kibana and Elasticsearch stack. The key thing that Team Cymru provides that is the most value added feature to the Team Cymru's Nimbus product is our reputation data. Team Cymru exists for the purpose of understanding global threats that are that our, our full overall mission statement is to save and improve human lives. And the way we do that is by enabling others to help to remediate threats online. The core advantage to the Nimbus solution is that it provides an outside in look of what's going on on your network so that you have the understanding of what threats exist within your network and what your network is interacting with that might be malicious. Those that are familiar with Kibana will know that the Kibana bases their solutions on what are called dashboards. The dashboards that Team Cymru provides within the Nimbus Threat Monitor solution fall into three broad categories. We provide dashboards that focus on network traffic so that you can under, have an understanding of what your network is doing, both from a performance perspective as well as from a, a traffic statistics perspective. And while this might be thought to be 
relevant mostly to network operators. It's also relevant to security operators. As Francisco mentioned, you have to know yourself and understand uh, understand yourself in order to have a chance at defending your environment from threat actors. This will provide you with some broad details on the statistics about what is going on in your network. The alerts panels take the Team Cymru's threat intelligence data and they combine that with a view of what is happening on your network in near real time. There is a little delay. It's, it's on the order of minutes because of the exporting process and the metadata processing processes, but the, the, it, the data is usually available in very close to real time. And finally, we also have a panel that talks about compromised devices. The compromises devices list is almost like a punch list or a checklist of these devices on your network were detected as being malicious themselves. And consequently, uh, they may be the highest priority devices for you to remediate for you to clean up on your network. Under the hood, the core architecture of how Nimbus is, is architected is, uh, first of all, it's a cloud platform. So we manage the system for you. Uh, on the network operator side, you export and share some network metadata with us. We take that and we process that data against our collective threat intelligence. And that collective threat intelligence includes intelligence on uh, things like our botnet, botnet analysis system. Uh, Francisco, on one of his slides, referred to our BAR system. That the BA there stands for botnet analysis. Uh, we also have controller intelligence where we understand malware controllers and botnet controllers and look at how they interact with systems and hosts around the world. And under the behind the scenes, we process hundreds of thousands of sus suspect binaries per day. And when we process those, we pull out certain key details about what domains and what hosts that they interact with, as well as some other metadata about that, that malware. And we feed all of this combined with, uh, combined with all of our proprietary algorithms into the creation of our reputation feed data. But one thing to highlight here is in the bottom right-hand side of that, that square in the middle of your screen, we have highlighted the community of Nimbus users. The global perspective that we're able to obtain, it really is network operators helping other network operators with Team Cymru as the conduit because that global perspective helps everybody to defend against the, the threats as they emerge. So what does this look like? The, Here's a, here's a quick introduction into the one of the alerts panels uh, uh, data fields. Understanding what your network is interacting with, the, the honest truth is that threats move very fast. And so understanding what are your highest priorities are is going to be very, very helpful. We provide malicious traffic insight where you're able to see data broken out by several different types of categories. And then we rank those based on the frequency that we see those on your network. So in this uh, quick screenshot here, this is showing that the top IPs that are generating alerts on a particular Nimbus instance. But the full dashboard is quite a bit more information. Here you can see we have data broken out by the top alerting ASNs by the both by source as well as destination. We have the top alerting IPs as mentioned already. We have histograms that show the the data over time and the changes in different detection signatures over time. We have data broken out by the top ports, and because this is all presented within a Kibana dashboard, every field here is a filter, a, a, a selectable field. So if you were wanting to understand threats better that are targeting certain services, you can select by those ports and you can select by the threats themselves. And highlighting just a portion of that screen, just the right-hand side, 
I mentioned that you can click and, and, and filter the, the threats by different categories because this is Kibana at the back, on the back end. And we're creating things like the counts over time. And those are viewable as a post filter sort of uh, uh, after you apply filters. It's viewable with the contextual counts of the particular threats that you're, you're uh, filtering on. With this, what you're able to do is see threats changing over time and how many detections by particular threat category or threat type you're observing on your network. This can be useful both for the purposes of defining objectives for a security operations team. For example, if you wanted to have your team focus on uh, a particular bot uh, uh, type, you can select that bot type. And I'll show that in just one moment here. But the other thing that you can see is that we have counts over time. The counts over time can help to show how a concerted effort to address a particular threat is performing as your team progresses through the week or the month that they're, they're targeting that particular threat. Here's an example for, of research into looking at the Mirai botnet. The Mirai botnet, as many know, uh, targeted uh, IoT devices and was very prolific uh, about 18 months ago or so. Um, here within, this panel, what you're seeing is the the events list that were selected as after the alert signature for Bot Mirai was selected. This creates a very easy, very quick way for a network operator to see the impact of Mirai and the the devices on their network that are impact that are infected with Mirai and you know, knowledge is the first component to responding to any threat. This panel puts in your finger at your fingertips the information relevant that you'll need in order to feed into your response and remediation processes. So I've talked a little bit about how we find global threats. And the, the truth is that it is network operators helping other network operators as Team Cymru being uh, with a con as a conduit, providing the, the contextual awareness across the globe. And we, as I mentioned already, we, we process many hundreds of thousands of malware samples per day. But we also run systems that uh, uh, we run honeypot systems and we detect signals on dark nets. And we run systems that emulate some bots and become part of certain botnets to get that deep understanding of particular threats online. And the, the key advantage to network operators with this tool and with Team Cymru's data is that you gain the benefit of our global perspective. But with threat intelligence, one thing that Team Cymru has learned over our years is that all policy, as the old network operator saying goes, all policy is local. We create some summary data within our, our reputation data, for example, where we create a summary score. But in addition to the score, we don't just leave you with a, a number of 47, leaving you to think, what, is, what does 47 mean? We give you the context of why we indicate, why we set that score. We share that algorithm with you, and we share the ways that we're doing detection with you with counts alongside the, the detection itself. What this does is if, if our, if it puts you in a position where you can use the signals that we've detected to calculate your own score, because we've, we see one thing and we have one perspective, but if that doesn't match your local policy, then you can still take that same data and apply your own method of, of calculating it that better matches your local policy. And here's an example of what that, that score looks like. And, uh, and also this is an example of how we want to be transparent about our calculations on it. This shows a particular threat, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, I can't recall what threat this one was, 
but uh, this goes through and shows exactly how that threat is is categorized, uh, categorized, uh, categorized how it's detected, how many times it's been detected as, in different uh, types of ways, and then shows you how the score is calculated. One of the things you might notice in the middle here, it says that the score DK is applied. I want to talk about that for just a moment here. As threat practitioners and security practitioners, we know very well that threats that happen today are more relevant than threats that happened yesterday. And those are more relevant than threats that happened a week ago. One of the things about our detection methods is mo many of our detection methods are have an active component as well as a passive component. And as those detections start to age out, we start to degrade the score very, very rapidly. Because if we stop seeing a threat, we want that to get out of our, uh, out of our reputation data as soon as possible. Because if a threat was present yesterday but has already been cleaned up, or if there's a, a cloud hosting provider that turned off a VM and now moved that IP address into the general pool and it gets assigned again, we want that threat data to be aged very, very quickly. What in our technique for doing that is to come up, we came up with an algorithm that decays the the score value very rapidly. So over the course of eight days, the score goes from 100% of the de original detection score all the way to zero. And by the eighth day, if we have not seen something more recent within that past eight day window, it is no longer in our feed. And these, these numbers here represent a percentage. So uh, for example, uh, a score of 100 on day one would be a score of one on, on day six. So it would, it would, it degrades very, very fast. So that's a quick overview of Nimbus Threat Monitor. And I want to turn over back, back to Francisco here, but very quickly, if you're interested and you want to join, the URL on your screen now is the way to get, to, to start that process. The system has some base requirements. We sign mutual NDAs. It's primarily for uh, autonomous system owners only. And in order to do that matching for you, you need to share network metadata. Over, back over to you, Francisco. I think you're muted, Francisco. Hey, James. Thanks. Um, well, our conclusion on future perspective. Well, the objective summarizes are to generate network knowledge to provide a high level of control over threat with the most product analyzed capability possible. With this, we can better understand our threat and thus better understand the nature of the enemy. The fighting to fighting our enemy, we need a strategy and we need a tool. When using for the suppose the Nimbus with great efficiency in traffic metadata in the classification and analyzing the enemy. It's our tool in ITS telecommunication that help us in our sensory activity to fighting our enemy. Well, at this time, our plan is show the solution in a, in a first time. I show the solution in the first time for demonstrate the capability. Mm -hmm. 
You have about two minutes left. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. For sure, the, the tools in action. Now, well, the demonstration, the Jingle solution. A uh, disclaimer, the metadata demonstrated is a real data and the tool is in production, active and assisting us. Our C-search in this complex world is the real data and the real environment. Is the dashboard, have a lot of dashboard, as them said, but in this presentation, I show only this specific dashboard, the TC hours. And this dashboard, we can see our malware activity in our backbone. In this frame, Alex signature is the signature from a lot of uh, malware, botnets, and activities in our backbone. Now, you show the power of filter. Uh, like Jim said, easy filters, easy web guy. Look at this. Um, I look for the my right activity in my backbone, okay? And this is the statistics from the last two hours, only last two hours. I can increase this, but it's not all proposed. In the last two hours, I have make a filter. Um, alert signature filter is the, is the carbon the the carbon filter is a sample filter from for the guy and apply waiting the back the back end process and now is only the mirai activity in my backbone. Well, is the event list. In each line, in each line is a good net activity in my backbone. Is the Mariah activity. In the first line, see the data. I show in JSON form. I like JSON. And this data, see, uh, the sister the search team, the security team can use like as IOC, like as indicator of compromise. For example, perform some sort of perimeter blocker. Francisco, can you wrap up in one minute? Oh, okay. Only, only this, only this is, a, is the data like a indicator of compromise. Uh, Well, I finished my presentation because the time slot is, is the end. But for to respect the time slot at this time, muito obrigado a todos. Thank you for all. Thanks for my, my employment, the ITS Brazil for promoting and encouraging academic research and the internal development of your collaborators. And thanks to Tim Cumry for existing and promoting a safe, clean, and free internet environment and providing content and tools of a great value to the community. I'm a Fascuse and I'm All right. And Thanks to a first as well and, and all of the participants here.